Eric, thank you very much for your friendly introduction to Business of Design Week. Thank you for inviting us to be a part of this amazing and well-planned event. Each year, you are pushing more and more the global agenda of the matter of design and architecture. Well, um, our studio is based in Copenhagen. Um, that means we are part of the Scandinavian tradition. That means that we have our professional grandfathers as Anna Jakobsen and Johan Utzon. And to quote Utzon, he talked, he said that architecture has to establish human well-being. We agree, but we add that architecture is also about social responsibility. It's about sustainable solutions. So um, that's some of the important uh, departures we have in our projects. Well, coming from Copenhagen and standing here in Hong Kong, uh, allow me to take you on a short guided tour uh, to make what is similar or what is not similar between the two cities. Both cities are gateways. Hong Kong, a gateway for Asia. Copenhagen, a gateway for Scandinavia. Here we see Copenhagen from the sky, uh, just close to the sea. On the next photo, we have copied the Hong Kong Island, the, the area of the city of Hong Kong on the same photo. So you see it's more or less the same size. We're talking about density. That's a huge difference, huge difference. Hong Kong is more or less six times what we have in Copenhagen. Talking about the skyline, in Hong Kong you have those slim pencils standing more or less side by side, looking to the sky, skyline of Copenhagen. It's nearly flat. What, uh, we have a tradition that we are not allowed to build more than fifth, fifth, five or six floors. So uh, castles, towers from the churches and the city hall, of course, stand freely as landmarks in the cityscape. Both cities are related to the water, just to the sea, to the sea or harbor front. And what is so interesting for both cities is to make a transition from the former industrial areas to front row, front row excellence for humans uh, using all that interesting space where we have relations directly to the water. Probably you have heard about uh, the context of Copenhagen Station. Copenhagen Station means that it's how you plan your city as a green environment, as a, a sustainable environment. It's also about making bicycle, bicycle lines. In Copenhagen, nearly 40% each day take the tour to their jobs using bicycles. That means that they take a tour more or less twice to the moon for them back each day. And that could be summed up in this cartoon. That is more or less what it is about. Okay, the team of this lecture is given more. Uh, we believe in our studio that architecture is not only about shape. It's not only about making nice buildings. Of course, they have to be nice, but it's also about making an involvement of the people uh, who are going to use the building afterwards, about the environment and the neighborhood around the building. So we think, we believe that architecture can add a lot of values to the site and to the uh, client and the users as well. What an, has been a work field for us for several years is culture institutions. Culture institutions is, so to speak, landmarks in the city, in the culture. I mean, this lecture uh, running the whole day is about culture in the city. So culture institutions is, so to speak, landmarks. What we see as a very interesting um, part of a project is to break down the borders. Normally, when you have a huge 
uh, institution, culture institution, it's more or less uh, uh, formal. So we w want to make it um, more involving people so they have an access to what is, of course, a part of the idea of having a culture institution, make accessibility to what is inside the building, so to speak. We will show a row of examples, uh, projects that take this departure around this uh, topic. The first one is the Royal Library in Copenhagen. Uh, we did an extension to the Royal Library. Here we have the old library with the main entrance. It's powerful, but it's very, very uh, closed and giving not the openness and are not inviting people to come inside. We have the big rooms with the shelves uh, from top to bottom, so to speak, without that much social space and space for knowledge sharing. We have introvert reading rooms. But doing the extension for the Royal Library, in the brief, we have the Royal Library here. We have a lot of cultural institutions, and uh, uh, we have the Parliament here. A stock exchange over here, so we are pretty close to the main area of Copenhagen, the existing library here, and the uh, extension here. In the brief, we were allowed to use all the area here um, for the building, but we wanted to compromise everything so we have a more directly flow and logistic in what is the day to day business in our library but also to make an uh, opportunity to have a big new city plaza with directly access to the harbour front and giving the possibility to have some of the oldest and most historical buildings in Copenhagen uh, freely and uh, visible for all people uh, on this road. And um, next one, yes, in the master plan there was a possibility to have a building over here which means that we could make a plaza here with uh, three facades uh, around this uh, new city plaza. Um, in a couple of years, it is expected that this building will be finished. It's going to be uh, a building for the Danish uh, Center of Architecture done by Rem Kohlhaas or OMA from Holland. And we see it here in close relation to the Royal Library. So uh, in a couple of years, the plaza will be a real plaza. Uh, a huge um, road is passing through the library. We have the old library over here and the extension to the side over here and the harbor is in this uh, position. <clears throat> Seeing from the opposite side of, of the harbor, the library uh, and the main layout organization of the library expresses itself very clearly. We have this uh, city plaza running more or less underneath the building. The building is a huge uh, massive standing more or less on a glass foundation. It gives of course uh, all people in the city the opportunity and the possibility to look inside the building and see what happens there. We have this huge vertical cut out of this uh, black uh, granite block where we have the big atrium which gives access to all the library functions. So it's a very simple scheme, so to speak. Uh, on this ground floor level or plaza level, all public uh, functions are placed. Uh, we wanted to change the situation from a traditional library where we only have books to be a, a cultural institution where you have a lot of different functions which, of course, will attract people. So there's a bookshop, there's a canteen, there's a restaurant, cafe, there's a multifunctional uh, concert hall, etc., etc. So it has become a destination in the city, so to speak. And people can choose between two things. They can go from the harbour side to the library or they can just swim uh, uh, past the library, swimming in the harbour. Coming inside the building, you see it's very different from, from the outside uh, exterior. Uh, the interior is uh, waving balconies made in a song, soft uh, concrete surface. We have the balconies uh, what, where each uh, balcony are a reading room, so to speak. Taking the uh, revolving stairs here means that you enter the library. If you're just on this ground floor level, you have a public area. 
the reading rooms are all double height, uh, in double height and related to the atrium where it's a huge glass skylight giving uh, indirectly daylight to the reading uh, places. And on this lending bridge, lending department placed on a bridge uh, where the road uh, are under many as a contact uh, visible to the, uh, to the city and what happens in the city. And of course, and very important, as a social space um, where people can gather together and uh, have knowledge exchange. On the road, you have the lending bridge just here with a huge uh, art piece in the ceiling done by a famous Danish artist. So it's placed strategically so it's visible for all people in the city. And looking to the facade close to the harbor, the building is cladded with polished black granite. It more or less mirrors what is happening around in the city. Uh, cars driving in the evening, all the lights are reflected on the facade. All the water uh, movements are reflected on the facade. So in that way, the building becomes a billboard or a mirror of what is happening around in the city. And the plaza, not at least, has become a destination in Copenhagen where a lot of events go on, from dancing to different uh, sports activities, uh, etc. Another cultural institution, uh, the Art Museum Aros in Aarhus, Aarhus the second biggest city in Denmark. Um, the brief for the competition uh, placed the museum on this site here, just next to the concert hall and a big convention center. Uh, we have two very important destinations in the city. The city hall here, uh, done by Anna Jacobsen, and a green park area here with a uh, row of cultural institutions around it. So what we found could be interesting was to make a walkway just through the building. So the combination or combining those two uh, interesting positions in the city was a part of uh, the day-to-day -day, uh, traffic and flow in the city. So this is the block, the mu museum, uh, very compact, and the walkway just through the building. Here you have the museum. It's more or less 40 meters uh, 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 in the height, but in the basement, you have nearly the same height, 40 meters, so altogether it's stacked with exhibition rooms uh, for nearly 80 meters. And the big vertical cut here is where we have the walkway coming inside. The walkway becomes to an atrium where you are allowed to pass uh, without entering uh, the museum. And all the balconies are um, the way where you walk when we are going from one exhibition room to another exhibition room. So there's a lot of traffic and a lot of movements uh, in this atrium. So it has become a lively space and can be used for exhibitions, art installations. One of the famous artworks uh, in the museum is Ron's Boy. Um, the art piece is the boy to the left. And um, Probably you all know Olaf Uerliersen, the famous Danish artist. Um, he won a competition about adding uh, art, ins uh, art installation on top of the building. You see it up here. It's named the Rainbow Panorama. It has all the colors from the rainbow. It's a skywalk, so to speak, where you can walk uh, around 250 meters in a, this uh, circled uh, uh, rooftop. Uh, and of course, it's visible for, from more or less all uh, positions in the city and has become a glory for not only the art museum but also for the city. More or less, you're walking. Yeah, here we have some tests uh, with all the different colors. Uh, there were made a lot of tests before this installation was finished. Walking around, you're more or less walking just in the sky and having a fantastic view to the skyline of the city. This is a private development uh, on the harbor front in Copenhagen, just pretty close to the uh, library, uh, which means it's also related to the harbor front. 
Um, it was a competition where the brief asked us to uh, place around 700 employees. Uh, so what we wanted uh, was to have still the contact from the city behind to uh, the waterfront, to the horizon of the water. So we placed all the workplaces in more or less two uh, uh, office towers. And uh, we have a rooftop here where we have the board, uh, board level. So what we had was a big window where it's possible to look through the building uh, and have a view and a contact to, to the harbor front uh, from the city. Using this uh, space created uh, by doing uh, this layout with the two office towers and, and the rooftop um, meant that we have a huge atrium. And from the ceiling we hang in the a third dimension meeting rooms, and on top of each meeting rooms we have a breakout space, a greenery, a small garden where people, uh, the staff, are allowed to take uh, the, uh, the breaks. <clears throat> Using this atrium means that we make a kind of a platform for corporate uh, culture, uh, understanding of that you are, as a staff, are a part of a bigger uh, community and a bigger culture. For the same client, we did a um, separate building just opposite uh, the road. We have the new credit building we just saw before, and this new uh, uh, building named the Crystal on this place. Um, the client wanted to give the city of Copenhagen a new plaza, and it was a kind of, a, I mean, a challenge to still make a private development, and then also have a city plaza. But we uh, did the shape of the building with respect for all, all the view, view lines um, in the city, just a second, um, and compromised the footprint, uh, which means that uh, even though the site is this size and the building is this size, then we had a free uh, surrounding, uh, which could, should be the plaza. The next thing was to lift the building in the third dimension, so it only touches the plaza level in three positions, so you're allowed to view under the building and you're allowed to pass under the building. So in this way, we had a huge plaza integrating nearly 2,000 fontaines, water fontaines, which plays in different situations. You can see the building uh, in evening time, and you can see that you have all those openings underneath the building. Daytime. The building uh, are cladded with a three-layer facade, um, and we take uh, water from the harbor to cool the building. That gives the result that uh, the building uses 25% less energy than a similar building on the same, of the same size. Coming inside the building, we have a very small uh, distance from facade to facade and a huge uh, skylight uh, over the atrium. Um, light colors, which means that you hardly need to use uh, electric, uh, uh, lightning fixtures for having uh, the work light. In Warsaw, in Poland, uh, we are doing a high-rise. Talking about high-rise in Hong Kong is, of course, something uh, very uh, difficult because you have a lot of high-rises. This building in uh, Poland uh, will become the highest building in the uh, in uh, Warsaw and will be the landmark of the city. Um, we twisted the shape of the building, so to speak, uh, not only on the ground floor level, but also in the height, uh, make a stepwise uh, shape of the building, meaning that we have a lot of facade area where people can be related to, to daylight. Not at least we placed a public uh, function on top of the building, so people have access uh, to come to the top of the building and have a fantastic view to the city. And 
what was of our interest was where the vertical part of the building me, me, uh, meets the horizontal public area uh, with a kind of openness that is so important, uh, talking about uh, how you walk around in the city and how you live in the city. Uh, with a lot of uh, public functions uh, on this level and with a huge uh, openness, uh, the building will be a part of uh, the cityscape and integrate what is happening around it. The facade uh, have double height uh, shutters or grills, which uh, means that you have a texture of the facade. So it's not just only an anonymous glass building. It will have that kind of texture with shadow uh, and reflecting the facade. So we'll have hopefully a very interesting um, facade, and as you see, this twist of the facade and small cuts means that you more or less see the building as a tree tower composition and not only a huge block. <clears throat> Here we have the ground floor level with huge openness to all what is happening inside, as access to a retail area in the basement and uh, access to a metro station. Talking about what is so awful, uh, war. It's happening each day, some places in the world. Um, we're doing the International Criminal Court um, in Holland, in Den Haag. It's an institution under the UN where more or less 120 countries has signed a treatment um, about taking war criminals to the court. Um, we have the site pretty close to the North Sea as a part of dune landscape. We wanted to uh, respect the dune landscape. It's a part of a big nature area. So uh, in our proposal, we, so to speak, cut out a piece of the dune landscape, which gave this very precise form and made the composition, the building composition, uh, very strict uh, in this um, position. It means that um, the composition more or less expresses itself like an art piece, um, standing freely in the landscape, giving people the possibility to look in between all the buildings and have the uh, dune landscape as a back backdrop uh, for what you see. So there's a huge con contact between the city and the landscape still, even though this huge uh, building uh, will be uh, on, on the site in a, a couple of years. On the basement level, on the ground floor level, we've lowered around five meters. We have a connection between all the towers with uh, public functions, and uh, just entering the towers, you're going to a more secured area. Finding something that could unify 100 20 countries, countries was uh, a little bit difficult. I mean, uh, having 120 countries means that you have countries from different cultures with different religions. But historical, uh, historically, the garden team has always been something that all cultures have relation to. So we took this team as uh, being a very important part of uh, everything. Um, all the ground floor level is more or less a huge garden and what we saw just before, the tower standing in the middle of the composition, nearly in the middle, is the court tower where four courtrooms are stacked on top of each other. It's cladded with a greenery uh, climbing from the ground floor level where we have all the gardens, so the greenery climbed the, this tower and is standing as a green building, of course, as a landmark uh, of the unifying uh, all those countries. The facade is done uh, in an abstract way. Um, it seems that it's very, very high. Uh, a journalist uh, wrote in the paper after uh, the comp uh, competition was finished and the pictures were released that the building wall were around 30 floors in the height. He numbered all the small grids. It's not the true story, it's only six or seven stories. 
but it means that we have a strap composition with different positions of the glass uh, in the facades, giving a lively reflection when you uh, see the building and when you pass the building. <clears throat> the courtrooms had a very huge interest uh, in our uh, layout and our design. Normally, courtrooms are very closed envelopes, introvert, um, even though in these courtrooms there will be awful sessions regarding uh, death, murder, uh, crime, uh, rape, and everything, we thought that it will be a kind of giving hope for the future, having these huge windows as a part of the interior in the courtroom, so you see the landscape outside, you see the horizon. Probably this building is the most secured, bu secured building in the world, um, not at least taking care of all the victims. If you don't have the victims, you can't run a court session. And there will be probably some bad guys who could have the idea to do something against the witnesses. So the buildings are very secured. Uh, you didn't see it in the uh, layout and uh, on the photos just before. We integrated, so to speak, more or less all the secure stuff in the landscape, um, so you, you can't see it. Uh, nevertheless, um, we should fulfill some requirements. Uh, for instance, if a bad guy throws a bomb, then the building should stand. Uh, so what we did was to make the facade in a comp composite material. It's uh, very um, uh, not that heavy and can't burn, so we hang it from the rooftop uh, so it will just go falling back if some bad guys blows uh, a bump. The material is the same as used, for instance, for airplanes or for the towers to windmills. And here we have the impression from one of the officers. Talking about uh, innovation, uh, just with the ex example from the ICC, here we have uh, a chair uh, innovated uh, on background of the Aarhus Museum that we saw before. Different layers where in between you can have different uh, patterns or logos. At the moment we are developing a new uh, ceiling system where we're using the hair from sheep. Um, there's a lot of sheep hair around uh, in the world. What is so uh, interesting is that it's uh, also acoustic, it can't burn, so it fulfills a lot of requirements you have to fulfill uh, when you are doing a ceiling for an interior. Well, um, we as humans are producing a lot of waste, enormous amounts. In Western Europe, each person uh, more or less are responsible for 480 kilos each year. And it's hard to believe that we are part of the building industry and we are probably one of the industries who have less uh, interest and let less research and development regarding how we can reduce uh, uh, materials and how we can reuse materials. But also talking about uh, sustainable solutions and uh, a possibility to reuse existing buildings is a very, very interesting uh, topic an example from uh, Shanghai, uh, just to, yeah, more or less opposite of the bond, the site is over here, we have the expo down here, where we were giving a site, uh, a former coal distribu distribution center, uh, where there were some existing buildings. Um, this main building, um, we reused the construction, stripped the facade, took out some floor plates, um, the client's requirements was that he will double the area, the uh, floor area, and we are not allowed to extend uh, the footprint. So we have to add uh, on the different floor levels. This meant that the client saw a very interest, interesting history talking about uh, what was the former uh, use of this site uh, around coal. We all know that diamonds uh, have uh, a background in, in coal, so he saw a very interesting um, history. At the same time, we came up with this solution where we just added uh, more and more for the floor plates so it grow wider and wider. 
So it became more or less this kind of impression of a diam diamond. Inside, you have this walk around in the building with big, big openings where you have a contact to this area, to the neighborhood, and of course to the skyline of uh, Shanghai. Well, normally, as architects, we think that we have foreseen everything when we are doing a building. This last uh, project is an example of that's not true. It's a project uh, for uh, a school for young students uh, it's called Performance House, where the students are teached in art, in uh, theater, in music, in dance. Um, it's a part of an old industrial area, so we cladded the building with cochin steel plates with uh, circled holes, and the uh, uh, expression of the building uh, is more or less what is backstage. Of course, when you have a school with all the students uh, trained in coming from backstage to the scene uh, edge, it was uh, a natural departure. But we didn't foresee that uh, the users of the building named this like a cheese uh, and uses in different ways that expected. So we'll have a short movie, please. Det er Sofie. Hej. <laughs> ja, der er jeg. Nu er jeg her. Det er sindssygt fedt. Mm, altså, det, det er sådan en stor bygning, som er sådan øh, sådan en rust. <laughs> det lyder lidt underligt. Den har vundet en eller anden arkitektkonkurrence. Den er sådan ligner en ost. Øh, men der har været rigtig fedt, og der er vildt fede faciliteter. Altså, kæmpe teatersal og sådan... Jeg ved ikke, det, prøver, det er sådan meget fancy, betonagtigt, Meget sådan mørk på gangen og sorte døre og ja, sådan noget. Jamen jeg ved ikke, det virker bare sådan øh, øh, meget moderne, tror jeg. Jeg synes sådan, ikke så hjemmeligt umiddelbart, men altså det skal det nok blive. Det er bare look at performance art building. It's, it's sort of a building like a church, a big church, and I, I like the building because it has this hose yeah. in it, and you can climb with the hose. First time of climbing on the building, <coughs> it was so scary, and I was so confused that how can this thin roof hold someone like me? What you have is very scary. Yes, it's, it's life and death. But I like to hold and just climb like a Spider-Man. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hammer. That was an amazing, amazing talk. We actually only have time for one question. So I'd like to, to see if there's any questions that 
we could take. I actually have a, a, a question um, okay. for you. That there used to be this modernist dream of, of social reform, more or less, through architecture. And your, your buildings and your designs seem to be successful, where so many of these modernist visions have failed. And I'm just wondering, what are some of the processes and the ways that you're thinking about architecture that might be different or diverge away from, from those earlier 20th century modernist dreams? Well, I think what we uh, have of a very interesting departure regarding the Christian is to integrate all the social responsibility, talking about the sustainable solutions uh, using the right materials as well. If you mix that in the right way, then of course you'll cross over what was the monistic uh, approach from, from the early time, earlier times. That's, that's actually exactly what I was in some ways thinking, that there's something we've been thinking about here in Hong Kong called what we're calling uh, social sustainability in mm -hmm. ways of, of mixing environmental sustainability with a way of building that will last for centuries to come. And people will start to really beloved their buildings mm -hmm. and really interact with them differently, uh, as we could see from your wonderful video. Um, please join me in, in thanking Mr. Hammer. Thank you.